Today we attempt to unite all of Africa under our banner. Returning with Godaya Ubi, Emperor of Guinea, prepared to do whatever it takes to accomplish his goal, and plans to found a new faith to lead him there. Also, if everybody watching this subscribed and hit my goal in no time, and it would mean so, so much to me. Thank you. So welcome back to our Uniting Africa series. And last time, we made some pretty good progress. As you can see, we are now an emperor, the emperor of Guinea. And we started down here with the Bassa tribe. And right now, my uncle holds it. We lost that over time. But somebody mentioned in the comments, which... I didn't notice. We changed religions. I don't know how I missed that. We're meant to be a com. So we're going to try and convert back to that. And we're going to need 1,071 piety. Now, to get that, we can, of course, do pilgrimages. And what I'm going to do with this character, once we're able to change lifestyles in 969, we are going to go into a learning lifestyle. Because today, anyway, hopefully, I want to adopt feudal ways. So for that, we need absolute tribal authority, the illustrious, devoted servant, and we need at least 70% of our era innovations. So scientific is going to really, really speed that up. And also, I think after we convert, I'm going to try, hopefully today, to make my own faith as well. I'm going to go more the warmonger sort of route with our new faith. And I want to convert back first, as I don't know if our vassals of a con will convert with me if we convert from a different faith. So I'm going to convert back first, hopefully then create that own faith with a mormonger tenet so we can expand a bit faster but either way that's for later we of course also have loads and loads of expanding to do now we do have some factions but hopefully we can just send gifts and hopefully try and stop them that would save us a big headache okay what i'm gonna do i'm gonna grant some of the people that don't very much like me some more vassals and hopefully that is enough to get them to start to like me she still hates me and i just give her a vassal that is great she's even more powerful now they gained 41 opinion she still has minus 100 of us you know what i'm gonna grant her another vassal this guy because he is in a faction against me and i'm gonna grant kong this vassal here and i'm doing that hopefully because that may cause them some problems because this vassal's really powerful and if he stands up against a khan he could probably overthrow them or get them sucked in to a long, long war, weakening them. So that's probably not a bad idea. Giving people you don't like vassals who may stir up some trouble for them. But we do kind of need to get her on our side if we can. This guy should leave. He has 80 opinion of me, right? Yeah, there we go. They can still raise up, but I'm not as worried about that. And the rest of them are now too weak after that. So the main problem is here. I mean, we could improve our army, but we don't have loads of prestige right now. Yeah, right now we need to try and stabilize our kingdom. As of course, we did just have succession from Didhu. And right now we are Godaya of Guinea. He is calm, forgiving, stubborn. He's a charismatic negotiator. He's a twin and robust. Where is brother then? Brother is... He has the land we're going to have to take back because on inheritance, this county got taken, if you remember, towards the end of yesterday's. And it's our mine that we built. So we're going to get that back. We have two sons. We have Talo and Waleji. And we're going to marry our daughter away. I thought that was a son. My bad. For an alliance. Now, we want to find someone close that can help out. And also, yeah, Mali, someone did mention in the comments, they got free because they did a subjugation war while underneath being my vassal. So that granted them their freedom. They were of the boy house. Well, they seem to have lost that. But our friend's kids are still kicking about, which is nice. You know, I like this alliance with these guys right next to us. So there's the uh, same faith, which is nice. And they're pretty powerful and they border us. And we can get a matrilineal lead. So let's do that. There we go. So they have just raised up to try and dissolve my empire title. Of course, that would ruin everything we have done so far. So we're going to raise all. We're going to look for some mercenaries. I don't mind spending like a... Do we need to, really? If we call our ally, we may not even need to spend money on mercenaries. No, they're raising all their men. So you know what? We should actually be okay not to spend money. If we can catch this army, and they're both going by sea, it seems, up here. If we can try and catch them out with our allies, that will be great for us. Right, so we're going to wait for our allies. There we go. They're right there. So now we're going to go in for the fight. We'll have our brother commanding. Hopefully he doesn't die, because he is actually the king of Guinea, and he's pretty powerful as well. And we have an alliance with him as well, so that is good. We're up 34%. I'm trying to read that. Yeah, my brother just died. Internal injuries. It did kill him. Oh, God. Who has taken Guinea now? My niece and vassal. And we can't negotiate an alliance with her. Really? Well, yeah. Okay, that's my... I shouldn't have put my brother up there then, it seems. Now we're going to go and start sieging. We are going to station besiegers everywhere that we can. Our allies are defeating them down there. So, I mean, this shouldn't take too long now to get this wrapped up. There you go. 93... Wait. 
It just invalidated as we were about to finish it. I think she died. Wait, why was it invalidated? Okay, I should have read that. I'm not too sure why that was invalidated, to be honest. Damn, okay. A Khan is expanding on their own. Look at that. They've taken all this. So yeah, they're going to get big and powerful. We need to make sure this person is always on our side. So send them a gift. Keep them happy with us, hopefully. And all we're waiting for now is our truce with our brother to end so we can take that land back, that mine. But what I'm going to do in the meantime, we need to get like our own proper duchy. So I want to create the duchy of Manding and that's going to be like my primary duchy, right? That we should keep on inheritance no matter what because it's got our capital inside of it. And I would also like to create the duchy of Bambuk because that has our other mine. So what I'm going to do is go to war against Ghana and start taking more and more of that off of them. And there we go. They didn't stand too much of a chance with that. And we're going to, yeah, hold all this land personally. This is going to be like the two duchies I want to hold and build up myself, especially because of the two mines. Okay, so finally, we can change now. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go down a theology focus, pick up scientific, and then start going down the theologian tree so we can just start getting more piety to convert. And then hopefully in this life, create our own faith. I think we should be able to do that. What I'm going to do now, I think it is time we go on a pilgrimage. So pious is what we're going to want to do. Get as much piety as we can. And where do we want to go? Oh yeah, we don't have many holy sites right now. So we'll go up here to Wadan. It's the furthest away one. This seems quite risky. So we'll get a caravan master and we'll get some mercenary guards. And what danger do we have left? The worst one is the hills. So you know what? We're going to hire a mountaineer. Does slightly help, but still quite risky. And we're going to pay to have as many pilgrims with us as possible to get much more piety earned on completion. A matter of safety. So I've had this nagging sensation for a while now. My pilgrimage has turned out to me more more hazardous than I anticipated, or maybe I simply haven't endured enough trials to prove myself worthy of the merciful God's protection just yet. I have, however, spotted a few impressive individuals in the local settlement who would surely improve the safety of the pilgrimage. You know what? That's not a bad idea. So we can pay for him to join. He actually joins our court. Or, no, I have faith in the gods. More pious. We get divine protection, more monthly piety. You know what? I have faith in the gods. We need to make this as pious as we can. So we could pick up the pilgrim trait. And let's see, hopefully we get a lot of opportunities to make this really pious. So we can get the statue of Rook, 0.5 extra monthly piety and it'll become more pious and we gain 100 piety. Let's put that down straight away. Well, well I got loads of artifacts here, which I didn't even notice. And we have loads of stuff. Okay, so we have two mighty bison hides. One of them is minus 4% to our men at arms maintenance. The other one is 3%. So once we go feudal, we're going to repair them now because they're going to be huge. Once we're feudal, we are going to put both of them up. That's going to save us a lot of money. And we put the statue down. We're now making five piety per month. Damn, yeah, this pilgrimage kind of sucked. We only got level one. <laughs> Which is not so great, but we are now up to 2,000 piety. It seems a bit wrong to do a pilgrimage for that faith and then be like, you know what, I kind of preferred the old one. But that's what we're doing. There we go, conversion. There we go, we have converted back. Okay, now that we have returned home, I'm going to see how much the faith I want to create is going to cost us. Our fervor is 100%, so it's going to be really expensive, which is terrible for us. Oh, I didn't notice that, but our current faith has ritual celebrations. So hosting a feast earns us piety. I may do that as well because we have a lot of money. So if we get Warmonger, that's a thousand piety. And instead of getting the offensive war opinion modifier, which we get a lot, we had like minus 80 on everyone's opinion yesterday because we expanded so much. And of course, we have so much expanding to do. We kind of need to stay at war. Instead, we get an at peace opinion modifier. So that's great. And we can use the invasion Casus Belli once per lifetime. And the head of faith can declare great holy war. So we're going to definitely, definitely want to pick that one up. I was thinking about doing community. Union, but you know what? I'm not going to do that route. I think it'll make it too easy for us. And you know what? We're also going to pick up Pursuit of Power instead of Ancestor Worship, I think. Or you know what? Instead of Adorcism. So this one, rulers have a conquest Casus Belli against neighboring rulers. Prestigious rulers gives an invasion Casus Belli once per lifetime, same as the other one. So that's going to be good for us. We'll always have Casus Belli's against our neighbors. And once we go to Feudal, we're going to actually need Casus Belli's and actually look for claims where right now we haven't needed to do that. Everything else, I'm happy enough to keep the same, to be honest with you. I I think that's okay. But being disloyal is a virtue and loyal is a sin. I didn't notice that. But if we reform a com, that is going to cost us 5,750 piety. So that is really expensive. We're 30. So what I'm going to do, you know what? I'm going to hold a feast as well and we'll see how much piety we get for that. And my intent, I'm going to try and befriend the king of Igbubanu. I know I'm butchering it, I think, but I love saying that. I think it's my new favorite word, Igbubanu. Just, just 
it's just great to come out. But we're going to do that feast and hopefully get a lot of piety. The celebrations end. Oh, my intent changed. Unless we became friends. No, for some reason, my intent didn't set. Unless I didn't accept. I don't know what happened there. But we gained 100 piety. <laughs> that is not a lot. Okay, you know what? We have a decent amount of prestige. And we can do a subjugation war on Kanem for 1,250 prestige. Now, she's quite powerful. So once we do subjugate her, we're going to have to make sure she really likes us. But, I mean, that's a nice chunk of land for us to get. Let's do it. We can always get some mercenaries if we get stuck in a tricky situation. But hopefully, we're not going to need to do that. What I'm going to do, first of all, move up over here. I was going to start sieging first. But what I might do is actually go in for the fight, first of all. We do outnumber them. So we should win. There we go. And now what we can do is just start sieging loads. We're up 17%, which is a nice start. Okay, we defeated their armies that one time. And I genuinely haven't seen them since. I don't know where... Oh, are they down here? No, I, I don't know where they've gone. They do have two and a half thousand men, but they seem to have just run away, which is fine by me. There we go. So we can enforce that and we have just taken a very, very big vassal. Now, it's not great having such large vassals. Her power has gone down from about 5k men to about 1,300, which is great. We'll ransom off all our prisoners, hopefully make a decent amount of gold, but we are going to send her a gift if we can. And I'll get 86 opinions, so she kind of likes me now already. So... All we have to do is make sure the few big vassals we have really like us. So over time, we'll probably, every time we have succession, give some of these kings more of these duchies to hold themselves. And that way, we can always kind of keep vassals liking us. But look at that. That is huge. That is such a big expansion. It always looks bigger in Africa because of the desert. So obviously, her land is only like this. But it looks huge, look. All of this as well added on now. So a lot of the time, Africa always seems a little bit more intimidating than it actually is. But our truce with our brother is up now as well. I am sorry to do this, but kind of need it back so I can start making some money, please. <laughs> So we'll just send our whole army in, quickly siege it and get over and done with. There we go. I'm up to 17 gold a month now, and this is on zero control. So once we get the control fixed up in Bambuk, we'll be making some decent money. Now, it doesn't seem like we're having any more children. We had two. We had two daughters, and it doesn't seem like we're having any more. We're trying to do, see if we can get one more child. That would be good at least don't want to have too little because then it become a mess so we got nickname the good my husband have you heard what they call you my wife says to me while straightening her back they call you godaya the good spectacular is it not it's on the lips of peasant and noble alike so we are the good which is quite fitting because we got you know, pretty good traits. But I'm going to do another pilgrimage and we'll see how much we get this time. Damn, this one was even worse somehow. I did everything I could to get more uh, like piousness achieved. But for some reason, our pilgrimages are going terribly. And I don't really know why. I think what I need to do to keep my land together is somehow get the kingdom title of Mali. Because if we get that, I think because the two duchies I want to hold in that kingdom title, we will keep our main kingdom title, our main duchy and stuff like that. I think that's how it works. Now we're an emperor, we can keep a full kingdom title and the land in it from succession because if we look right now, our other daughter is going to take out of the mine once again. Granting Mali independence could be something to do, but look how much it's going to split up out of our land. So I'm going to leave it until he dies and hopefully the kingdom title to Mali goes to somebody smaller. We can revoke their title, take it back off of them and get the kingdom title for ourselves. Okay, so we just successfully seduced our wife. So hopefully she gets pregnant from that just before she turns 45. She's 45, so is it not going to pop up now or could it have triggered just before? Nope, that didn't pop up. Well... That's probably the worst thing that could have happened. I want to try and fix this inheritance. So if we create the Duchy of Bambuk, um, that also goes away. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to make this mine my capital. May affect our income for now, but succession, we shouldn't lose so much of the land we actually want to keep now. No, we're losing this Duchy title and this county. So we're still losing one of the mines, but we are keeping this land here, which we want to keep as well. So I think that's better overall. But I think if we get the kingdom title of Mali, it will fix it, although I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, hopefully this guy dies soon, please. And there we go. This is what I've been waiting for. Profit. This makes faith creation 50% cheaper. So if we now go to reform a com, we're actually only eight away. So we can just wait for that now any second. And I think that is everything we want to do. I'll keep that color. That's a really nice color. The name obviously stays the same as we're reforming it. So it's now going to be organized. But we have Warmonger and Pursuit of Power and also Ritual Celebrations. It's not that important, but I'm happy enough to just keep that and not pay the piety to change it. So reform faith. Okay, actually, that's quite bad. All our vassals 
stayed as older com, I think. Wait, no, they are. Oh, they all converted, but I guess the land hasn't converted. Yeah, but all our vassals seemingly have come with me to this new reformed faith. Yeah, perfect. Did panic me for a second then. But now if we look, yeah, we only have this way. We've lost a West African pagan version of things, but we only need absolute tribal authority and 70% of the innovations. We're making good progress on the innovations. Shouldn't be too much longer. But we have seven out of 23. So yeah, maybe quite a bit longer, but I'm not too worried about it. But of course, what we have the ability to do now is holy wars. By this looks of things, we can basically holy war everyone. Of course, we do need to have a border to holy war, I believe. So we can't just holy war you, but... We can holy war you. So we can also now do holy war for kingdoms each life, hopefully. And to invade kingdoms. So that's going to really, really speed thing up. Oh, I didn't check if we're pluralist. Oh my god, we're pluralist. Thank god. Because if you're pluralist, once you do a holy war, it unlands everybody. If you're not, they keep their titles, which is never a good thing. So I'm going to be honest. I think going feudal today, going to absolute... Going to absolute crown authority wouldn't be too difficult, but the big issue, realistically, is going to be getting 70% of the tribal innovations. Right now, we have 7 out of 23. So, yeah, I mean, we've got a lot more to get. We'll keep trying at it. We'll keep getting scientific on our rulers and just see what happens, but it's not looking too likely. Okay, we just did a few little wars over here. Took all of Lower Gamer Luck, and we give that to this guy over here. So he's got a nice little duchy now. But that has pushed us towards Exalted Among Men. Now, that does give us the ability to do an Invade Kingdom Cassus Belli. And I mean, technically, after that, we could do a Holy War one as well. Problem is, we don't have a thousand prestige to actually do it. So if we do it, all that really happens is we lose some fame, which will take us back to Illustrious. But I mean, that doesn't really bother me too much to be honest with you i was debating who to do it against and i think i might go against this guy and take the kingdom of sahara because that gets us really close to the mediterranean sea and once we get there we could go ahead and unlock west african canoes and then we can raid overseas so i mean we could start raiding the pope and stuff like that loads of the rich places in europe we could start raiding from here which would save us a lot of time going around so i think that is a pretty good idea now my army is fully rebuilt I think let's just go for it. He's going to have 5,800 men. We're going to have 16,000. We lose the level of fame, but I mean, we're three quarters of the way there. So it's not really mattered too much. So I'm going to raise all my men at arms on their own here and then raid all my levies behind them. And then we're going to get my men at arms to go on the capital. All our levies are going to follow them. Also start sieging around. But because we're proper on like the desert now, supplies are terrible. So you've got to be really, really, really careful. Okay, there's going to be a battle. So I'm going to take a few of my levies here as as well, I think. If we can get into a battle early. Okay, they're just going to run away. So we'll start sieging their capital. Oh, and we siege a nice sword. Plus four prowess and some extra prestige. We're up 23%. Damn, first battle. And okay, we are going to win it. Nice. There's another 5,000 up there. So we're going to want to bring our men at arms and some backups to follow them. We can siege these three counties. I mean, things will be looking really good for us. I mean, we can hold these two choke points. But here, they can't get back down. We're pretty safe. Like, yeah, we're good. Just siege now. There we go. So enforce that. Let's see. I'm hoping, yeah, we picked up no vassals. That's actually exactly what we needed. Now, I'll... do I have the kingdom title? No. And how is Mali going? Still kind of strong. Hope, well, actually, he's losing some wars. Hopefully he dies soon. I want the kingdom title of Mali for myself. So we need to try and get that really bad. But over here, I might actually create the kingdom of the Sahara and give it to somebody else. So they can manage all of this new land. I don't really want it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this guy some titles around here. Like maybe those. And then I'm going to give somebody else, say you, these two counties and the kingdom title. And I think I said this earlier, basically. So hopefully he doesn't get too much more powerful than his vassals. And he may get stuck in tyranny walls and stuff like that. Limiting the power he can send my way. It's always a good idea to make your vassals unstable. Unless you know you can trust them, which I don't. And I love that we're at the point where our vassals are expanding for us. Like doing holy walls to take some land. That will save us a lot of time as well. If we can kind of get our vassals powerful enough, which is kind of 
another benefit of having these strong, kind of strong kings as vassals is that they're more likely to expand, right? But what I'm also going to do... Oh, we can't holy war you. That is strange. I thought we'd be able to holy war this guy. He's the same faith as the guy we just fought, but for some reason, we don't have the option to holy war him because we can do a kingdom level holy war still this life. I was hoping to also use that on this guy and do like a massive expansion both ways, but the option is not appearing. We do consider each other evil. Okay, for some reason, it's now coming up that we can do a holy war for a kingdom. I don't know why it was coming up before anybody knows let me know please but the option is there now and once again we don't have enough piety but the only issue with that is we lose a level of devotion which doesn't really bother me that much to be honest yeah we don't need all our armies this time so we'll just take a handful ones we actually need as long as it's enough to win it doesn't matter too much and we've sieged one county we haven't seen okay there's some armies down here Oh no, our wife died at 59 years of age. She died in her sleep. So we have no wife. Now we're 54. Could try and get a son. Yeah, well, let's try it. She's right at the top. She has a great trait. Uh, she's on the wrong face. She's have the old one, but she's right culture. Let's try it. You know what? Why not? We can just demand her conversion. And let's try and seduce. And let's just see if we can get like a genius son. That would set us up really well. Oh, we just unlocked onagers. Okay, so once we're out of uh, debt with our prestige, we can finally get some siege equipment. So I think... Next, let's go for currency for the extra development growth because that's going to be important pretty soon. And then after that one, we'll go for West African canoes so we can do some raiding overseas. And we sieged their capital and took his player air so we can enforce that one. And that is once again another kingdom taken. So with this land, I think think. I mean, we could either give it to the Sahara, make them quite big. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grant titles and give him this new land over here. Because yeah, I don't want to get too many vassals. And we're getting to that point down here, look, where there's just a lot of them. So I want to start making some of the kings I have a little bit bigger. But I've always got to remember to keep them on my side or they will turn on me and cause me non-stop issues. But right, there we go. Successfully seduced her. So hopefully she gets pregnant with a genius son. I mean, that would be way too perfect. I didn't even really realized I had robust sin. I was really confused, but he didn't pick up genius, which is terrible. But we've had a son on player A, which if we look, succession is fixed. We just can't have any more. Let's go. Let's find a good name. I think we go back to Togba, where it all begun. So we're going to have Togba Ubi once again. We're going to start educating him. Also, make sure we have a court tutor. That will be important. And let's just see how he turns out. Hopefully, pretty good. But let's just hope we don't have any more children. My next goal, I want to try, as this guy died in Mali, and it didn't split up because his brother seemed to have just died. So we're actually going to grant this guy independence and see if we can just usurp the kingdom title. There we go. 500 gold. Usurp. Now, hopefully, that means we keep all the de jure land in Mali, right? Or is that not how that's going to be? Because otherwise, because these two mines are in different duchies, every time we have inheritance, they're splitting. So if, if that doesn't work, if e any of you have any ideas in the comments about how we could go about fixing that, but he's got independent, his land has split. I'm not too worried about it, to be honest with you. It's not too much of a concern. I think we may as well go for this. Let's get a shoreline. We can do a holy war. We'll take our men at arms. And is that going to be enough? That may be enough to defeat him. And let's go for a fight straight away because yeah i want to get a shoreline so once we pick up the ability to raid we got some nice targets are we gonna he's going to see so we caught it oh and we captured him in that battle so that holy war for that duchy was incredibly easy it's in a separate kingdom tile. don't want to make sahara too powerful so we are going to give this to somebody new and give that to you and then later on once we hopefully get the whole kingdom we can grant the kingdom of africa away as well because yeah we're going to stick in mali I want Mali to be my homeland throughout this whole thing. Keep building it up once we eventually, hopefully soon, go feudal. Also, one thing I actually want to ask in the comments, a good name for our kingdom. We could just call it Africa, but if there's any other cool names you know about, that would make sense. Let me know, because hopefully in the next part we finish it. Maybe it'll be two more. I'm not sure, but if you have any good names for the kingdom, I'm getting a bit bored of Guinea now. I think we've outgrown Guinea, but yeah, let me know in the comments. Oh, we've had another son. This time, he is strong. Hmm, hopefully, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to reset perks pick up scientific but then move further down the whole of body tree rather than theologian as i don't need uh profit anymore and now we can actually embrace celibacy right For some reason we 
can't embrace celibacy. Not sure why it's not telling me. Maybe after my hunt, it will let me. Oh, that'll be quite big. We can vassalize this person over here because I also just picked up True Ruler. I had a lot of perks over here, so I routed them down to pick up True Ruler. And we can vassalize this person. I see that as a benefit. Why not? Right, corner in the wolf, and we have an 80% chance that we can shoot it. Yeah, let's just shoot it. Let's be safe. I don't want to risk getting killed. And that is how you do it. We actually got the wolf. And we got 600 and... 32 prestige. Not a lot, but that's okay. And we can vassalize another person now. So we'll grant our new vassal this vassal over here. And we'll see if we can demand her conversion. Maybe first send her a gift so she really likes me. And now we have an 80% chance. There we go. Perfect. So she like loves us now, so I don't think she'll give us any issues. And what I'm also going to do, I think I'm going to finally get some siege equipment. So we'll max them out. They're going to be so helpful. Oh yeah, we can embrace celibacy now we're home. So I don't think the tooltip tells you that, but yeah, that seems to have worked. So right now I'm mainly using holy walls to take land because I want to save some prestige to try and increase our crown authority before we die. So we need another 568. So I don't want to waste it on walls. We are 61, our son's three. I don't know if we're going to live another 10 years to be completely honest with you. Maybe if we pick up healthy, which is not too far away, we may have a chance. But yeah, I, I just don't want to play as a child with this much land to manage gonna get dangerous so right now i'm not really focusing on any massive expansions mostly just clearing up all these little counties and stuff like that now we actually got onagers it's so much faster to siege it was so painful before oh no we just got know thyself close to the end and our son togba is only six i was hoping to live a little bit longer than that but yeah, that's going to be really painful to deal with. We have a lot of money though. So hopefully sending gifts is going to be able to save us. And there we go. God Dyer. I must say, God Dyer was one of my favorite characters we've played so far. Everything just seemed to go so well. So as you can see, he went from Togba to Collie. Collie was the worst. He died of camp fever. No fault of his own. Our great grandfather. Did who was great as well. And of course, God Dyer was fantastic. But he died of old age. A renowned herbalist. It was said he could cure all alignments with the right concoction. Togba ascends to the throne, merely seven years old. He will need to allow his regent during his first years of rule. And our regent is selfless. It is our mother. So we're in safe hands. She's selfless and she's our mother. We're, we're okay with that. No massive factions just yet. That's fine. Uh, the more people may join, but we can send gifts. So I don't think we're really in much trouble. Problem is, our brother took our other mine. And I don't really know how we can stop that from happening, but it's really annoying. But I think for today, I'm going to leave that there. We got the faith. I think going food is going to wait a while longer because it's actually quite difficult to do. And I'm thinking this may have to be spread over two more parts. And if that's the case, it will probably come out Monday, Tuesday. Thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you did enjoy. I'm going to end the video with a massive thank you to all the channel members. We have Toxic Flame, Mr. Diesel, and Zeharmus. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.